Okay, thank you so much for joining us for episode 105 of Black Coffee and Crime. Uh, we're gonna we're joining you this week, of course, with Brandy and Jackie and myself. Uh, thank you to all um, new YouTube subscri- subscribers. I think the latest subscriber, her name is Eileen. So hello, Eileen. How are you? Um, if since you're new here, let's just go through this real quick because I've seen some comments on old episodes. So we've been doing this for about three years since the beginning of the pandemic. So I see people commenting on old episodes about how we talk too much before we get to the subject. <laughs> Even though we've evolved, but right. Um, but here's the thing, you commenting on an old episode about what we did in 2020, 21 or 2022 is not helping. It isn't. So if you're saying, oh, I had I, the one lady was like, um, I stopped watching after four minutes because you never got to the subject. We probably told you we weren't. We probably told you what we were we always do. about at the time. So, okay. And I said, you know, I was gracious. And I said, well, thank you for the for the view. Short that it was, but thank you so much. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But basically what we do, this is called Black Coffee and Crime. Okay. So <laughs> we talk about crime. She don't give me access to YouTube. I know she does. That's why she don't want to give it to me because she already know. I know your club back. So we got to be like, well, nobody asked you to watch the first place. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? So basically we talk about crime, but we don't always do it in a linear fashion. Okay. So we're not going to, we're not case files. We're not crime junkies. And those are some of our favorite podcasts, but we're not them. We talk about crimes very, it's very unscripted. We know what we're going to talk about, but we don't know what we're going to say. We segue into other subjects that, um, Co- you know, correlate or correspond to what we're talking about. Sometimes we just veer off altogether. Um, but we can do that. It's our show. If at any time you are triggered by anything that we have to say, please exit out of out of them. Just hit the X in the corner and just go look at something else. We don't mean to offend you, but sometimes we might say something that's not to your liking. We get it. Um, we're not law enforcement professionals. We are not... Um, investigators we're just talking about the crimes that we we've seen we've read about we want to talk more about and we talk about them in a very casual fashion but also giving our perspective on what we think happened what do we think you know could have happened differently what what things were affected by the crime how you know all of those things that we could talk about if you have any suggestions or if we misspeak or misinformation comment in the episode comment on facebook and or Instagram at Black Coffee Crime. Um, you can leave us a message, any suggestions for shows that you would like to, or subjects you would like us to talk about, we'll talk about those. All right. All right, let's go. Okay, you so know, the, the, the crazy part is if they actually, you know, if they're looking for a more serious, because I know for a fact that was part of your script at the beginning. Like, hey, look, we talked about the bullshit. We could have run over some other stuff. We could talk about this right now. If you want to look for the actual part of the crime, you may want to fast you forward. Go, go forward. You know, go forward. In a you used to say that every time, and you said that yeah. for at least a year. Yeah, so, like, we'll get there when we get there. It's literally just, a f- like, you literally, if, you, if people listen to it, like, sometimes I go rewatch our shows, and I'm laughing like crazy because I'm like, what the hell are we going through? What do we be on? Yeah, it's, we, it's hilarious, but informative. Because I'm like, yeah, I forgot. We used to do that. church announcements where we would talk about other like smaller stories that we found in the news or in the media that um, were happening in between the shows. We still do that, um, but now we just kind of scrap the show that we were planning and then talk about the thing that's in the news right now. So we used to do that. We've changed a little bit because, you know, we were like, you don't ever get to the show and I don't mm-hmm. hear what I wanted to hear. It's called fast forward. The what? thing is, so much is going on during the week and everything, like there's stuff still going on. Right. And so you want to talk about it. And like, you know, this is this is unscripted. And so we're going to talk about it. The lady was saying, well, you should have captions to tell us when you start. Ma'am, first of all, I have a job. What you two ch- what you two channel do that? We have jobs. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you this, even if I didn't have a job, I am not about to while I'm uploading, go through and say at 3102, this is where we start talking about Sam Cook. No, you'll start talking about Sam Cook when you hear Sam Cook's name. 
That's it. You know, I mean, ain't no different than a, a watching a, a a YouTube video that has seventy ads in it. Exactly. I mean, or and I'm not talking about the ads that pop up through YouTube. I'm talking about the actual ads that 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 particular YouTuber does, where they just cut off and about for four minutes they talk about ads. Right. And they do that multiple times, but I just fast forward. I ain't tripping. I still yeah, want. And this honestly, this is a different type of show. We are having conversations, it really is. informal conversations about certain subjects. Um. So again, if you want a more structured show like the serial podcast about Adnan Syed, which is one of the best ones I've ever listened yes, to, um, then that's not this. This is not, like I said, this is not Crime Junkies, which is where Jackie and I cut our teeth at. This is Crime Junkies was was our shit. Or Crime Junkies, Files, they play a lot. Yeah. And, you know, a Moms lot. and Murders, um, which is a good one. I don't know if you ever caught on to Moms and Murders. That was a good one. I used to listen to that on the way into work. Um, they were around there literally sitting at their kitchen table while their kids were outside doing something, talking about murders, and they would joke and laugh or whatever. So again, if you want something more structured and more scripted, this is not it. But if you want regular people talking about murder and crime and social issues, the way that regular people talk about them, this is it. So, all right. So um, we have a running list of things that we want to talk about. And for the last couple of years, we've had the Freeway Phantom Murders talking about six young uh, Black girls who were murdered in D.C. and Maryland in the early 70s. We never got around to it. So we decided to do that today. And just so happens, there was a kidnapping of, um, what is her name? Carly Carly Russell. Carly Russell. Russell in Hoover, Alabama, just on the 13th of July. There is a there is a connection between these, not like a serious connection, but the connection in the demographics of the victims. Um, and I think that's very important for us to get to. But um let's go ahead. Okay, so Brandy, you had something that you wanted to add before we got started. Oh, I just wanted to say that they caught that uh that old nasty uh Long Island serial Long killer. Island serial killer. What is yeah, his name? The Rex Human Hurt something. I don't know how to pronounce his name. So if you're unfamiliar with the Long Island serial killer in the early two thousands, human. human? Yeah. H E U E R M A N. Howerman? Human? Something like that, girl. Um, what was it like 2010, 2011? Um, there was a string of murders in Long Island, New York. Um, they said they had a couple of different suspects, but they can never pin it on someone. Finally, 20 some years later, they find Mr. Rex. Um sorry, y'all. Sorry about that. Um Rex, something or other. Uh see, I told you it's unscripted because I didn't silence that. FaceTime. Um, but yeah, they found him. He's like in his 60s or 70s or something. Uh, I think. He looks serial killery. Serial <laughs> killery. Serial killery. He does. Serial killery. Brandy makes up stuff. Serial killer. Nice. Yeah, that's a good one serial killer yeah so they found him i'm quite sure there's be more stuff in the news um as a uh, that goes there was another update on a story that we did but i forgot to write it down i forgot to write it down but i'm quite sure i'll update you serial killer me serial you writing it down too all right so the D.C. Uh, fa freeway phantom murders have never been solved. So these murders began in 1971 and went through 1972. And um, there were six girls, a couple of suspects, but no one really panned out. And for the most part, there's no evidence. Mm -mm. Um. After all these years, I got these gnats in Texas. Jesus, um, such a pest. And they're different. They're different gnats this year in 2023. They, are, they really are different. These aren't like the regular little pesky gnats that you different. can't. 
These mugs are the size of regular flies. I don't. I'm so tired of this. I, they aren't, I, and they aren't, and they aren't moved by the blue lights that you plug into the clock. No. Not really moved by that anymore. So I'm, I'm so tired of Texas pests at this point <laughs> in my life. Like it's just too much. It's just too much. I, I, I can't. I can't. Um. So basically, these unsolved murders. If you know anything about what happened, where should go? You'll see when you watch it. Oh, yeah, my camera just my camera just uh jumped up and, and and jumped up and did its own thing. I think it was a pop lock. <laughs> I, can't. I can't today. You'll watch and be like, Good. I'm just gonna let it go. Okay, we just. We're just gonna let it go. Gonna let it keep going. Yes. Okay. Are we signed in? Okay, we're good. Um. Okay. So beginning in uh, April of 1971, um, you got like a DC neighborhood, predominantly black. Um, and you know during the 70s and wait, the would you have a right to the story? We're not talking about what's the face. Ooh. What Russell? Uh, 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 Carly. We could. T we're going to talk about Carly at the end. Yeah, at the end, and how okay. she relates to this. Um, because it is, it is, it is. She is worthy of talking about and what's going on with her. But um, if you grew up in the seventies or the eighties, you knew that this was a period where you could send your kids outside from sunup to sundown. You could send your kids to the store. And really largely not worry about if they were going to come back because these were neighborhoods where everyone literally knew everyone. Um, and, you know, you could send your five or six year old kid to the store with some quarters to go get a loaf of bread or whatever. And then they would come back. Well, in April of 1971, um, Carol Spinks was sent to the store. She was 13 years old. She was sent to the store. And. My she, sister. By her sister. Not a mama. Because the mama told her not to go anywhere. Yes. She was sent by her older sister who lived in the same apartment complex to the store. Um, she thought, hey, I can trust her to go to the store. Everything will be fine. Um, however, this not Jesus. Um, however, a couple of hours later, she did not come back. Um, then they found her deceased. Um, the way that her story goes is that um, she was found six days later um, behind St. Elizabeth's Hospital. And um, after they found her, they did find that she had been physically and sexually abused and she was missing um, her shoes. Was the she thing, strangled as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the thing is, is that they believe that she was kept alive for a few days before she was killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she had um, undigested food in her yeah. stomach showing that they had fed her. Yeah. Um, so she was, you know, she was kept alive for a little while. So who knows how long, how much abuse that she went through before this. Um, the second victim was Brenda Crockett. Uh, she was, no, that was, not, she's not the second victim. Second victim was Darlinia Johnson. She was from um, Congress Heights. Um, I'm not sure where these neighborhoods are, but basically she was um, on her way to a little summer summer job. This was in July of 1971. Someone may have seen her get into a black car with a black male, African-American male, and then her body was found 11 days later. The thing about uh, Darlinia, Darlinia is that someone called the police to tell the police that they saw a body. The police go out to the general area and check. They say they didn't find anything. But then six days later, after the first call, they go back out and they find her decomposed body. You think they checked? No. no. They did. Girl, they don't care nothing about no little black body. You, there's no way you possibly went and checked the exact same area and the body pop up. The body was there already. And the, decom the decomposition of it had already let it be known that it had been there in that vacant sun forever. So right. don't you would smell it. You would have smelled it. The thing about Darlinia is 
they, they got an anonymous call who basically gave X marks the spot where the body was. Mm-hmm. And the body was exactly where they said, where the caller said it was a couple of days later. They don't know because she was so decomposed and it was summer and it's very humid and hot uh, in DC, um, which, you know, it's not DC, it is in the South. Um, they weren't able to tell if she had been sexually assaulted, but they did si- find signs of strangulation. Um, she also did not have her shoes on. What is with the shoes? Souvenirs. Yeah, I guess so. Souvenirs. The only one who had her shoes was the last victim. The very last victim. It was the only one who had her shoes. The next one was a 10-year-old uh, Brenda Crockett. The, it, she, okay, so she she goes, she was sent to the store by her mother. She was 10 years old. She was sent to the store by her mother. A um, couple of hours after she was supposed to come back, there's a call and her little sister answers it. Um, and she's telling him, but the, the family is already outside looking for, looking for Brenda. They're already outside. Like they're already looking for her, but her little sister's at home. She answers and she says that a white man picked her up and she's coming home. Um, and then she says, bye. And she hangs up the, the call back. And then it was her again. And this is the time the stepfather answers the phone and she says, did my mom see me? Basically, you know, did she see me? And so the stepfather's like, tell the man to come to the phone. Um, He hears some oh, steps and the little girl says, I'll see you and hangs up. That's the last they hear from her. Um, she is found the next day by a hitchhiker, no shoes on. Um near Prince George County and she was assaulted and strangled with a scarf found around her neck. She was 10. Um, And it just... I heard about the it story. It sounded like he, you know, he was definitely taunting. He's, by then he got cocky. He's cocky now. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, I'm just getting away with it. Definitely wasn't a white man. I stand by that. Um, I think he told her to say those exact words, which is what she said, because he was trying to manipulate her into saying that. I'm I'm standing by the fact that it was a black man. I'm I'm 100. I'm very convinced myself that it was a black man because you would have spotted a white man in that black. Well, they man. said they found. They said they found um, um, Negro pubic hairs on in on the body, so that were not of the girl. So. Which girl? Unless he had- I think it was on two of them. I can't remember which one. Okay. Um, the fourth girl was um, yeah. Namashia um, Yates. Uh, she was 12. This happened in October. She was walking home from the store. Again, kidnapped, assaulted, and strangled. Um, she was found within three hours, a couple hours. Also in Prince George County, Maryland, her shoes were missing. They did this time. They found some unidentified green carpet or rug fibers on her body. Um, someone said they might have seen her get into a blue Volkswagen. So at this point, on murder number four, the newspaper and the media started dubbing this person as the Freeway Phantom. So the Daily News was the first to call this person the freeway phantom. And typically, um, serial killers, criminals, don't give themselves these names. It is the media who gives them these names. And when they do that, um, the, 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 the killer gets some sort of notoriety. You look at the, the doodler. Um, that's who, I, that's where the update was coming from that I said that there was an update on the story. There was an update on the doodler and I'll talk to you guys about it and then we'll post it. Um, but he didn't call himself the doodler. He was a man who drew and this is how he got his victims in, in the Bay area to come to him. Cause you know, during that time where it was free love, but you know, green river killer, they, the, the media gives the people these names. So that's where the freeway phantom come from, came from. Um, the fifth victim was Brenda Woodard. She was 18 from, um, uh, coming from Baltimore um, she was supposed to be on her. This was November 15th. So from April 
21st to November 15th, we have five girls. So from spring to fall, we have five girls. She was more violently attacked. She had been stabbed several times. She did have defensive wounds. So it says that she did fight. Um, she was wearing her shoes. And I think that she was still wearing her shoes because of the nature of the attack. And she was older um, and she fought back. So yeah. she was found, you know, fairly quickly within a couple of hours. And then her coat had been placed over her chest. This is something that if you guys watch a lot of true crime, you know that when someone attacks a person and then covers them up, there is an uh, an aura of familiarity. They might have known them. They didn't want to see them like that. It, you know, it disturbs them to see them. So the fact that he covered her up, now her shoes being on might have been because she fought back, but you covered her up. Because he knew it. Yeah. The other the other uh crimes have been committed by strangulation. This this is, this is something else. Mm -hmm. And then with her, she had been out with her boyfriend, so she did have semen present, but the they were thinking it might have been from the boyfriend, but the boyfriend said the next six place. So and no, that, was, that, that was the last victim, Diane. Diane was visiting. I thought that was a 17 year old. Mm -mm. Well, Diane was 17. Um, Brenda okay. Woodard was 18. Um, this is also the victim. She was the one that had the note in her pocket. Yes. In the pocket. Right? Yes. And the note said, this is tantamount to my insensitive, ins insensitivity to people, especially women. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can, Freeway Phantom. That was the first real clue that they had. Um, the note was written in her handwriting, so they knew that the, whoever it was dictated it to her to make mm -hmm. her like this. Um, they did, say, they did say as well that the handwriting didn't show any stress, so that makes me think that she knew. That she knew it. She felt comfortable. I don't know why, you, I mean, that note would be, you know, off-putting to me, but that she, you know, the fact that it didn't show any stress means that she, she was comfortable with this person or or at least was familiar with this person. Or either the fact that because, I mean, she may have feared like something going on, but he could have told her because I know you, like, hey, look, I'm gonna let you go. Look, I just need you at the snow. Or could have been anything like that. But that's when it said no stress, I was like, oh yeah, she know him. At the Well, the whole cover in the face, that that's just us because we know true crime. But my thing is, if somebody told you to write a note, like, well, the, like maybe, I mean, somebody would have to say, like, I can't read or write. And then the fact that you got me writing this weird type of note, I'm going to be looking a little like. Well, that is a different time. We are very cynical now. Well, We're yeah. talking about the early 70s. So you're talking about a 60s baby where this did not happen. And she probably thought it was a joke. Maybe thought it was just some yeah. fun, or no, he doing some silly and yeah. You know, just no one thinking that at, deep at deep. this time. I don't even think the the phrase serial killer was a thing. Yeah. No, it it was. I don't think serial killer came out to about eight when the Atlanta murders, right before the Atlanta murders, right? Somewhere late seventies, early late seventies. Yeah. Um, that's when I think when um serial killer was a thing when all of those murders along the Pacific coast, um, starting, you know, uh, Gary Witch Ridgeway, um, Ted Bundy and the freeway murders there. Um, so, you know, that's when that starts. So that's like mid seventies. So I don't think that that was even a phrase. So even though she was the fifth victim and parents were really trying to keep their kids at home, she was 18. Um, you know, she was doing normal stuff, having dinner with a classmate and getting on a bus. So, you know, there, I'm quite sure people, like I said, these, you know, insulated neighborhoods where everyone knows everyone. So you're watching her get on the bus. Like I'm watching her get on the bus and then she's going to get off the bus at home. Well, somewhere between her getting on that bus and her supposedly, supposed supposedly getting off, supposed to be getting off. My goodness. Something happened. 
And that's what also makes me think that this is someone familiar from their neighborhood because it would have been stranger danger because you know other people that are not from your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It would have been someone that was familiar. Um, and also the note that was left was weird because of the word tantamount. No one really uses that word. They don't even use that word now. Um, right. There was a, a guy who was it, like a computer engineer or something. And he used that word in his notes and also at work. And then they found articles when they, this guy, they raided his home later for another crime and they found um, the word circled a few times on articles uh, pertaining to the six to the six young ladies, but they really didn't find any other evidence, like any tangible evidence at his home. His name was Robert Askins, and we'll get back to him. Did they re they did not release that letter out to the public? Did they? They did. I believe they did. So, I believe they did because they put he put his name the freeway freeway phantom in there. Now that, that was, girl, they did, that was stupid. Mm, I don't know. They didn't have anything. They didn't have anything at this point. They had nothing. They had nothing to tie this to anybody. So if they did release that, it's it's a double-edged sword because you want someone who recognizes someone who uses this type of language because we don't have anything. We need some help. Yeah. Um, the last victim, now mind you, the fifth girl, uh, Brenda Woodard, was November 15, 1971. The last victim didn't come until September of 1972. It was almost an entire year before he did this again. Um, her name was Diane Williams. She's the one who was 17 and was visiting her boyfriend um, and his family. She also got on a bus uh, late at night. And a couple hours later, she they found her body by 295, 295. Her shoes were also missing, but there were no signs of sexual assault. But there was DNA from probably her boyfriend. Um but at that time, they wouldn't have been able to test DNA uh, evidence. Yeah, they would do nothing with it. There were traces of semen. Now, as far as the investigation goes, now this is where the problem is. You've got a DC neighborhood, working class people, and the DC Metropolitan Police and uh, some police departments from Maryland. This is also during the days where police departments did not share information. Right. Police departments didn't actually start sharing information well into until well into the 90s. That's so why you didn't have a lot. You had a lot of crimes that went unsolved. Um, you know, people operating in different counties, but no one's talking to each other. Things happening simultaneously, simultaneously, but no one's talking. So they kind of formed this task force, but it really didn't go anywhere. They didn't have any evidence. And like Brandy said, you're dealing with poor black kids. You've already got a distrust of the police. These people don't already don't trust the police. Mm -hmm. They already don't trust the police. Um, and by the time, I think it was, uh, I want to say her name right, Neno Mashia. How, how are you guys saying her name? I uh, think you said it how. Mashia? I would have said it. <laughs> but... okay. Um, by the time she was found, they had already started misplacing evidence, purging evidence by this time, purging the files. The reason, one of the big reasons why this has gone for so long is because they've misfiled information. They purged the files. It's been missing. They didn't do anything with it. They didn't follow up leads. And then also by the time you have the last victim, the, the FBI took over a little bit. They got involved. But then the Watergate scandal from involving Richard Nixon happened. So they abandoned it. They abandoned it. And so, yeah, I, I just, it's something weird that you have the murder of six young girls in the nation's capital. And 50 years later, you guys still don't know who did it. Right. It's amazing. It's just so infuri infuriating that 
it hasn't been solved. And then the reason it wasn't solved is exactly. just like, and then they closed the damn case. Yeah, yeah. So they closed the case. Now, the Metropol DC Metropolitan Police say that they've never, well, they've closed it and they've reopened it. And right now it's an open case still. The police departments in Maryland are like, nah, we, mm -mm, we done. We don't, we don't have enough to even do anything. Their cold case people are like, no, we're not even touching it. We don't have nothing. Now It wasn't even really reopened until the black woman who had been worked on the case kind of back in the day kind of took over. And, you know, we always got to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, nobody Amy else don't pay attention. Is her name. And she came in at the tail end of the cases and she, you know, she felt like they're not doing anything. They're not paying attention. She uh, retired, um, like, after 40 years. She, in 1987, I think, or something, she opened the case, reopened the case in 1987. Um, and then she was able, when she retired, she was able to keep those files that were available. So she has really made this her passion project to find, and she's still alive. Now, there is a podcast called uh, the Freeway Phantom by Celeste Headley, um, which came out this May. And there's 10 episodes. Um, you can find it on our hot radio, uh, Apple podcast. But basically, this podcast talks about um, the, the socioeconomic reasons why, the social reasons, the economic reasons, the racial reasons why this case was never solved or why they never got far with this case. Um, so yeah, the evidence had already been started to be thrown out by the time, you know, before the last murder. They're like, there was nothing. Like Besides the that, pictures, no, there was nothing. The pictures, their clothing, nothing. nothing. So they can't even go back and test the semen evidence that they found on uh, Denise. Oh, excuse me, on Diane Williams. They can't even go back because it's gone. You have five pairs of shoes that are missing, but you have the girl's clothes. You have the the scarf that was on one of the little girl's necks. The pubic hair. The pubic hairs. Um, you have all you had at the time all kinds of trace evidence, but um, there was uh, in just today. Um, I was on TikTok and there was a girl, a young lady, she was talking about something called necropolitics. I had never heard of this before. And she um, brought up this man's name. His name is Ashile Mamembe. And he wrote a paper for the European Center for Populist Studies. And necropolitics is basically the use of social and political powers to dictate how some people may live and how some must die. So basically, it's a study on how racism, classism, and money says who gets the attention and who doesn't, where the money goes to solve a crime. And, you know, sorry, you know, we don't have time. We don't have the resources to do this. We have seen this countless times in Black communities, uh, Indigenous communities, Hispanic communities, where you know, there are major crimes, missing kids, missing women, missing young men, and there is little or no attention, yet you'll have the same in another demographic in the media, and there's media blitz. There's all kinds of resources pushed towards finding um, non-Black, non-POC people. Um, and this is where uh, Carly comes in. So Carly goes missing. 25 years old, Hoover, Alabama, near Birmingham. Sorry, I'm trying to get this damn man. Um, oh, it's just on my nerves, Jesus. It was bothering you. Couldn't it's even. another character in the show. Shit. <laughs> but she goes missing last Thursday on the 13th. Um, it's really kind of a grassroots effort to get her story out there, right? I didn't hear it on the news. I heard it on Twitter. I saw it on Twitter and I saw it on TikTok. Then I saw it on the news. So for 48 hours, we're looking for her. Everybody's praying and rooting for her. We're watching the video of the dash cam. We're watching all of this. Saturday night, she comes home. Okay. 
But why is it a problem that she actually survived? This is what necropolitics is, is that because she's black and can't nobody convince me differently, because she's black, we thought that she would not survive. Because one, we never see it. You very rarely see black victims come home. But now it's a problem that she actually survived her ordeal because now people are like, oh, it's a hoax. Because we don't believe one, female victims, and we don't believe people of color. We well, I'm just saying, I, but, I petitioned the Lord for her and I was praying, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, this story is just so bizarre. Yeah, that's and, what I was thinking. And but then how when they found her, it really makes sense, though. <laughs> huh? But how many stories really make sense? It don't. But you know, this, now I ain't even trying to be funny right here. I ain't trying to be funny. I'm like really not. When they said they found her wig, I said, she, "Girl is in trouble." Oh, when they took her wig off. Mm-hmm. When they found her wig n- next to her car with her purse, the car was still running, oh. and they said only they say it only took them five minutes to get there and she didn't have that she didn't have her wig didn't have her purse nothing i was like her wig her apple watch her phone were all found at the scene now carly called the she was on what 459 i think they say i 459 she saw what she thought was a toddler she calls 911 then she calls her brother's boyfriend while she's on the phone, girlfriend, I'm sorry, while she's on the phone with her sister-in-law, her sister-in-law hears her ask the toddler, are you okay? And then she hears Carly screaming and then nothing. If you see the video, and I've seen like an aerial photo of the area, like there's a residential area not too far from the freeway, like on the other side of a corpse of trees. And The video is really fuzzy. People are trying to like point to where there was another figure that came out of the, you know, and maybe snatched. I don't know. Like I wasn't able to. I didn't see no figure. But what I did see was, um, you see her hazard lights, but then you see like two other cars with their hazard lights on that go ahead of her and then one behind. So I'm like, are these signal cars where they, you know, what did they were they going slow and then, you know, or were they parked on the side of the road and saw her take the bait? Where's the baby? Was it a baby? Yeah, because um, nobody else think, reported that they no, saw Nobody the reported it. The way I took it, because it's, it's I'm like, I'm like, BW, not gonna lie. I said, I, I definitely pray for her. I definitely am glad she's home, but it's very odd. So, so uh, it's just a lot of it. It's just so odd. But because it's so uh, tricky to say that this couldn't have happened, I can't say that. I can't say it couldn't happen to her because it could happen. She could have survived. She could have got back. You know, but at the same time, just because we think logically, because we are true crimers and we think way beyond what other people think, because we already look at all these different things. We already have experience and read about all this different stuff. We've seen things that shouldn't have happened happen. We have all those type of things because we're critical thinkers. You know, naturally, which BW is doing, is thinking, well, the ads are off. You know, it's just a natural instinct. Yeah. Well, I can't speak for everybody else. And I'm not gonna say she wasn't kidnapped, but I will say as a critical thinker of stuff like, this, I definitely am thinking this is off. Some is off. It's but definitely- I thank God that she home and thank Jesus and thank you God for hearing our prayers and bringing her home. So that's the best I'm going to go with it because I don't want to get on Girl. that. I don't want to mess with myself. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. Crazy. I'm going to give yeah. the situation the benefit of the doubt because one, we don't listen to women when we say, when women say they're victimized. Okay, that's one. Right. Um, two, we don't listen to women of color when they say they're victimized. So I'm going to reserve my judgment because right, stranger things have happened. Um, and if you were praying, you were praying that she came home. So what kind of condition did you want her to come home in? Did you want her to come home in a box or did you want her to show up? And people are like, um, it's quite if, they had I mean, her for two days, if they had her for two days, why would they just drop her off? And we don't know if she was dropped off at home. We don't know. Girl, I done heard what so many stories. What condition she was in? We don't know any of that. Um, well, 
folks just coming out the woodworks with just all I all care kinda... is that, like I said, the only thing I care about is look, we pray for her to get home and the baby home. So we're just gonna celebrate that she's home, celebrate her mother. You know, as a parent, all of us are parents. I'm quite sure that's traumatizing. You know, I, I, that's the only thing I'm going to do. I reserve any thoughts because yeah. I'm who I am and how I think to myself because it doesn't matter. I pray the for this. Is, I'm happy about this. If it is a hope I still or need to if there know. is a setup, and that's on her. It's not on But she doesn't want to tell. But she doesn't want to tell. It's not. She doesn't have to. She doesn't have to. No, she don't have to. But she doesn't have to. my mom wants to know. Yeah, you, you, you want to know. You wanna know. And the longer Girl, she, I the longer know. it goes without an explanation, the more the more crazy the conspiracy theories are going to come. Um, but just a couple weeks ago, we had Rudy Farias from Houston show up at a church, and he's been missing for eight years. It's it mama unbelievable. Mama. And they were like, we don't, right, but they were like, we don't believe him because where did he come from? Why is he not talking yeah. the whole time? He was a victim. Mm. The whole time he was yeah, a victim, not the type of victim that we expected him to be. So that's that's the thing. Like when it comes to women, and then especially us, we always go to, and again, I don't know the details of Carly, but we always go to what was she doing? What was she doing there in the first place? No, why I didn't did think she that. stop? But there's but those are the, the questions. Why did she stop? You you know, like don't yeah. question like it's all about like victim blaming. Well, I really was worried thinking about it because you know I go to Birmingham a lot mm -hmm. and I drive by myself and I was uh, talking about this with my sister that if I saw a baby on the side of the road. I'm because I'm a mother, I'm going to stop. Now, I don't know. I would probably would have stayed on the phone. I would hope that I had stayed on the phone with the police, but I can't say that I wouldn't have stopped. You know, some people like, I'm not stopping, whatever. Oh, I would have stopped. I would have stopped. stopped. I wouldn't have got out in my car. I don't know, you know, because it's oh, dark. You know, up, bro. <laughs> you don't got to say nothing. Your expressions be so loud, but. Granny, I, I, she I gonna, she gonna keep on driving. Well, some people said that they would have went to the next exit and then called from wherever that I saw a baby or whatever mile marker. But <clears> now, I pop now would I have gotten out the car? I don't know, but I definitely would have pulled up there and I definitely would have stopped. I definitely would have been on the phone number one, acting, you know, like, hey, oh my god, there's a baby out here. Somebody needs to get here. And considering, like you said, the time frame for the cops getting there, which is in the video, is literally like a couple of minutes. I definitely would have waited. So I'm not 100% sure I would have got out the car, but I definitely would have put over there with that kid. But that's and she wasn't like she was out and on, on a desolate road. Like, she she was in a well-populated area where, you know... Maybe because it's uh, just so black. I yeah, mean, and I think they familiar. said she had left the, she had left the summit, which is a, a, a mall <laughs> there that I know okay. very well. But my she thing is, the if summit. there was a hoax, why would you call 911? From the site? I mean, like, if it was a hoax, why would you call 911 to have yourself recorded? I didn't, see the, I didn't see the dash cam. I saw that aerial footage. I never saw the dash cam. But my thing is, nobody else saw. But I mean, it, it could have been dark, and she definitely passed the baby, you know, had to pull over afterwards. Um, and like I said, I if I seen a, a baby, on the side, or you know, the conspiracy theorist saying it was a little person in a diaper and all kind of craziness. Mm -hmm. But if I see, mm -hmm. if I was in a baby, hey, I right probably. Man. And this is a place that I travel often. Like you know, I know this freeway. I know this area. This is my neighborhood. I you know travel home. You know, often I probably would have stopped. I probably would have stopped even though I'm not from Birmingham and I'm just going to my doctor's appointment and coming home because I'm like I definitely would have stopped. I definitely would have stopped. And I'm getting out because it's a baby. It's a baby. What yeah, am I it's a baby. It's a baby on the freeway. So I can't go to That's the next scary. because that baby is gonna be roadkill in just a second. And mm -hmm. what am I gonna do with myself if I was like, you know what, just pass that baby up because look what happened to Carly. I'm gonna go to the next exit, and then you hear or somebody else will stop. Right, somebody else is gonna stop. We have that phenomenon where you think someone else is gonna do it. 
no, someone else don't. will do it. And, and, and then that's, that's, so it's socially, we, I think that we no longer, we've lost our sensitivity um, because we've been in this media age, we've seen too much that we're just insensitive now. In hindsight, people are going to say, I wouldn't have stopped. I would have did this. I would have did, I did I that. Stopped. But that's because you know she ended up missing. I you're, you're looking back at her. I know I would have stopped. I would stop. I'm a mom. And as you far just, as the, like the trafficking, um, anybody can be trafficked. Anybody can be trafficked. There is. Wait, they were saying she couldn't be trafficked. No, that's but I'm just saying. Saying. But oh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like anybody, can everybody be can be trafficked. A trafficked like grandma trafficked. could be trafficked. Right. There are. There's a taste. There's a sick taste. Sick twisted taste for everything. Um. Alabama is adjacent to Georgia. Georgia, well, at Atlanta is the biggest trafficking hub. One of the biggest trafficking hubs in the world because of that big ass airport. Mm -hmm. So who's to say it? It don't. It it wouldn't take long to get from Birmingham to Birmingham to 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 Atlanta, or wherever to Mobile. Well, probably longer to get to Mobile than it would be to <laughs> Atlanta. But it about it be about. It'd be about a little bit longer to get to Mobile, but it, you know, it, you got you got the port in in. It'd in, be about four yeah. hours to get to Atlanta. About six and, to get to Mobile. Well, for where I am, it's six. Oh, then it's about seven, seven and a half. No, Birmingham. because um, Birmingham's below me. I'm at the very top of the state, mm. so a little bit less, yeah. But less. I forget that you way up there by Tennessee, but like she could have been. Well, at this point, she's a victim. Um, that's why you know we we just gonna leave it at that. At this point, she is a victim. Um, the reason I say that there's a there's a, a connection between her and these six girls is because of the attention. Now we're getting Carly got the attention because people spread the news on social media but at first there was nothing right there was nothing. nothing you know you didn't hear a young woman got kidnapped on the news on cnn you heard it no we did time. that you know black folks in social media we yeah we got it was it was a grassroots we're gonna share this until somebody as we've, as we've done almost a lot of things lately until we somebody do something unfortunately those six young ladies didn't have those six girls didn't have that and then you're talking about also these are poor working people. These are poor working people. They okay. probably, the city probably, you know, like it's so sad. And without us, without social media, Carly wouldn't have had that opportunity. Carly wouldn't have had none of this, you know, uh, attention or, you know, to her case and would never have happened. Never. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I, people were a little, I think a little pe people were a little, a little about the mom statement, which, um, you know, the mom can say whatever she wants to say as her child. But I think people were a little put off by her statement um, saying, you know, something about ne negativity and rumors and stuff like that. And They don't owe you anything to tell you exactly everything that happened, and it's an ongoing investigation. They can't say everything, but people want to know because they're invested mm -hmm. at this point. And um, and really, it's only been a few days. She just, you know, it's only been a few days, and then we'll probably know by midweek something. But um, people are just invested, and they want to know. They want to know what happened. This is, I, I believe, yes, we do want to know what's hap what happens, but Black people, and I'm saying this because we're Black and we could talk about Black people shit. Um, anytime something happens to a Black person, Black child. If you ain't child, Black, don't get in this conversation. Right. Because you could apply this to yourself and your community if it fits, okay? We just talk about Black folks because we Black, okay? It's just an example. 
You know, they 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 be like, oh, they did it. Let me hear it. Yeah, no, do it. Does this only apply to black people? No, Brandy can't hold me. Then don't just, don't get up in here. The situation. Well, I'm an you know, expert in being a black person, so. Uh, yeah, if a oh, not us. situation is similar to you, then just apply it to your situation. I'm just using this as an example. But anytime a black person gets shot, is a victim of any sort of crime. The burden of proof becomes ours, not the perpetrator. As a victim, we have to prove our victimhood. We have to prove that we are worthy of, of grace, of the grace of society to say that we are a victim. Anytime, think about Tamir Rice's mom. The boy was 12 and she had every mother has to have a press conference to defend their child's victimhood. Every single time. And, and it, I hate to see it. I absolutely hate to see mothers get on TV or families get on TV and have to have a press conference to talk about their dead ass kid. Why do I have to talk about it? Why can't the police, why you got to hear it from me? Why do I have to get up there? Oh, to make the blow well, easy on the police department because they ain't do their job. Well, they also say, you know, if we want to go back as far as, you know, um, um, you they say it, that it's, it's more just, of a personal, it's more of a personal thing when they see the parents up there for the killer or mm, whoever. No. I wouldn't be able to talk in no press conference. I'm not you getting can ask talking in a press conference. conference. I'm not getting, but it's not even to me there's a difference between um, the way that that white parents are treated and black parents are treated. So you're saying basically we have to defend our child that they're we worthy have to defend the victim to be found. Yeah. And when white parents get up there and their child is is abducted, they are making pleas to the public, please mm -hmm. bring our child back. It is never a question of where that child was, why they were there what they were doing when it and then at that point the mother has to also defend the fact that now people saying well you know about two years ago her son was actually in the gang anyway so her you know son was in detention you know now 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 that black mother not only has to defend the fact I have to that defend you my know, child's record now you gotta defend their reputation i gotta defend the record i gotta defend what's happening it becomes a, a, a hell of a burden and they find the worst picture to, to, yes. to show you or they bring up their detention record from the sixth grade so I have to defend things that don't are that are don't even pertain to what has happened the white parents have the opportunity to focus on the crime and you bring our child back because grace is automatically given we have to fight for the grace we have to earn it we have to let the public decide whether or not we are worthy of the grace to have because you're because of their past record you're gonna be like well you know you know he had bad grades and you know all through high school mm -hmm. what does it have to do with that is? Girl, and, and okay. don't be black a black a woman and a prostitute child don't even care about you you no longer exist she brought they it on herself care. exactly they don't say she brought it on herself yeah it's her fault and I don't know because we don't have any evidence. We don't have like police conversations or notes from um, the DC Phantom uh, murders. But just imagine, because this was in the era of your kids ran away. You couldn't even report your kid missing. They would just no, which automatically is, say they which ran is what away. They, which, which is what they told them about the first one, said Carly, which is what the oh, police there? told her. That's what the police told her. That your daughter just don't worry, your daughter just ran, she just ran away. She was like, no, she wouldn't run away. They you know, kids, kids that went missing, all kids, black, white, whatever, have gone missing. And they would always tell them, don't worry about it. You can't report them missing for 48 hours. 48 hours. They ran away. And you could not convince the police to open up a case. Now, Police science says if you don't find them in forty eight hours, we don't have a good chance of finding them alive. Right, girl. It's in the beginning of uh, the first forty eight. Yep. If we don't find this kid in two days, we probably will not find them alive. So all of these kids who were not found in, in within the forty eight hours, it's the police's fault because you didn't do anything. 
Well, these so, police waited in, in the Phantom case to the point where the bodies were, one of the bodies was so uh, decomposed, they had to recognize her by her clothing. That yeah. was um, Johnson. Uh, Johnson. Um, just had it up. Darlena? Yeah. Johnson? Darlene, Darlena? Yeah. Yeah. By her clothing. And the guy called and told them where she was. Now, the guy, let's, let's take it back to the original, what we were talking about, the freeway phantom. The guy that they really suspect, so they had these Green Vega rapists. It was like a group of rapists that were going, a gang of rapists that were in the area. They interviewed them. There was some like some jailhouse confessions or whatever, uh, but they didn't pan out. Now, the guy that they really suspect, and he's dead now, was Robert Askins. Um, they say that he had a connection to St. Elizabeth's Hospital. He was a rapist and a murderer who had been convicted uh, and sent to St. Elizabeth's uh, Hospital. He had been let go. When he got out, he assaulted somebody. When he got out of the hospital, he assaulted somebody and kept doing it for years. So they're saying that that period from November of yeah, that, gap. On, that gap was whoever did this was probably in jail. That's exactly what I thought. Mm -hmm. Probably in jail. Now that might coincide with Askin's record, but they could never have, they didn't have any physical evidence. They found circumstantial evidence in his house because they raided his house in 1972, 1971, 72, something. 1972 they raided his house and they found uh like references to the word tantamount like he was obsessed with the word and then pictures and articles about the murders but they didn't have any physical evidence or if they did have physical evidence they couldn't tie it to anything because he started to purge the shit um so they really believed that this was the guy who did it um, that Robert asked me if he was an African American man. So I, at first, when I first heard about this, I was like, "Is it a white man?" And then I was like, "You can't have a white man coming in the hood and don't nobody know." No, nope. not so not during that time. Six with times. that guy, did did the people in the neighborhood? Was he from the neighborhood? Um, I don't think so. But yeah, he looked, I didn't, I didn't see anything about him being from the neighborhood. Um, he looked like any other weirdo, you know, um, trans. Or he looked like any older brother or whoever you know is in the. It's a low socioeconomic neighborhood. You know, you see people hanging in front of the liquor store, the corner store, the. Yeah, and if you see these people often, I mean, you're not going to have any any fear if you see some random uh, you know downtrodden person because you know and also this is you know again in the 70s yeah. it, you know it, it was still a a, a a sense of community mm -hmm. yeah I mean he, he looks like any other dude that might have been hanging around um I, I like you know outside the corner store or whatever he looks yeah in a black way he looks nondescript in a very black way he's very nondescript he's very much you know uh a vanilla type black dude you know like and there was no stranger danger at that time mm -mm. either mm -mm. so if somebody said hey you want to you know it's hot you want to you want to ride sure i'm carrying this bag of groceries because this didn't exist this 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 fear of people did not exist you know this is the age of hitchhiking and also i think that i think we talked about this uh last the last show when we talked about how i think i said that when i see people who look like me i think that these are my people and i think that they they will protect me no matter what they would have had that. This man looks like my uncle. This man looks like me. This man looks like my dad. So we are a part of a larger community. This man will protect me. I have no fear of this man. Right. I have no fear of this man because why would he hurt me? He doesn't know me. 
And that's what that's what would have been the sentiment. He doesn't know me. I didn't do anything to him. He's offering me a ride. I'm gonna take the ride. You know, there was no there, there wasn't the the and I'm quite sure that there were a that's court. that's that's probably exactly how Brenda felt. Like this I, I know him. Like Yeah. Brenda, I know him. I, he would never even even Carol asked me to write um, this crazy note, you know, but whatever. Even Carol calling the house was saying there's a white man that picked me up. She didn't sound agitated. She didn't mm -hmm. sound, she wasn't screaming. This white man picked me up. Okay, bye. I'm I'm coming home in a cab. So she trusted whoever told her that, I'm going to send you home in a cab. She really believed I'm going home in a cab. Mm -hmm. I'm going home in a cab. Like none of these girls had any fear of this person. I truly believe that. Yeah. They had no fear of this person until the end. Yeah. no fear and he I think that he had seen these little girls a lot of times did he pick them I don't think he picked them out um like I'm gonna get her I think it was just where they were scope in the area yeah where they were at the time where mm -hmm. he, where they happened to be if he was around um and funny like the period his first one with Carol and then to jump to Darlene, um, April of 71 to July. Like he goes like two and a half months. Yeah, because the first the first initial um, you know, it, it's kind of like that first initial, like, dang, I'm I gonna get away with it. Am I gonna get away with it? They're gonna be looking for me. I gotta stay low. I gotta stay, stay, stay. And then it went July 8th, July 27th, October 1st, November 15th. So he was hitting them like this. Like they, and then and then nothing for almost a year, so I don't believe that was a a a, a fit of, of conscience that conscience that did it. I think he was in jail, or and how do we know like, that he wasn't doing this before in another neighborhood or another area? They're not going to connect, like you said. They didn't talk to each other. We don't know when he actually started. We don't know if there were other victims that we don't know about that were prior to the first girl that we do know about, but it was in another area or he dumped them in another area or or maybe he took, he was in the, you know, um, he was in jail or who knows what, we don't know. He definitely, probably, don't know if that he was definitely probably killed way more. The comfort level that he had, the, the cockiness, the it was definitely way more than those six. They only just tied those six together. Yeah. I definitely that. Yeah, I, I definitely believe that because they didn't, those, like I said, we were talking about those police departments didn't really connect to anything. You know, they, they would keep information for themselves. So I, I, if some enterprising person, journalist would go and look, there would be some similarities. Now his, his, uh, um, rap sheet is, um, so in 77, this was after the murders, the last one, he, went to went back to prison for rape and abduction of a 20 year old girl um young woman um so he his career started like in in the 30s he's he in 1938 he killed a girl he stabbed a girl a prostitute um he stabbed a prostitute. He had also um, poisoned five prostitutes by giving them cyanide, and one of them died. Um, he said he was a woman hater, which in his note, and that well, not not in his note, but in the note, talk about his hatred of women. Um, he went to a mental hospital. He broke out. He uh, assaulted some orderlies. Then in 1939, he was sent to a St. Elizabeth's Hospital, which was where Carol was found. Um, he was released in 1952. He strangled a woman to death. Um, he got retried for the murder in 1938. Um, and But the conviction was overturned in 1958. So he was he was already a serial murderer, rapist and murderer. So his hatred of women, his uh, knowledge of he, he'd been in that area for a long time. 
And then the fact that he was older and, you know, we, we are taught to respect our elders. Mm -hmm. So if our elder stops us and says, you know, I, can you help me find this house or, you know, girl, get in here. It's hot. Let me, like I said, let me drop you off or whatever. <laughs> this is an older man. This is an elder. This is a person who's supposed to be respected. And so they're looking, this is my grandpa. This is my, my uncle or this is whoever. Like, um, we're not going to show him disrespect. Right. Right. And it's very right. Yep. Think about, we're going to go back a little bit. We talked, uh, when we talked about Albert Fish. Those people got this little ass old man. Those he invited these. He went up to this random family, kind of just like, "Hey, how you doing? My granddaughter's having a birthday party. Would your daughter like to go?" And even though it was they're like, "Yep," they're sure like, "Yeah, sure." And they let their little girl go with this old ass man, and he ended up dismembering her and eating her, all because there was. There's an old man. There's no reason, reason not to trust him. Why wouldn't we trust him? And this kind of attitude, because these things were like few and far between. They were happening where people were abducting people, but it wasn't like a part of the social conscious. Like we just, they, they weren't really aware or even scared because it was just like, if something like this happens, that person has to be really ill for this to happen. This hap And it happens to other people. It never happens to us. So in that little isolated, well, insulated DC neighborhood, it won't happen here because everybody knows everybody. But that guy had been around for a long time. Yep. And even, and we know this, even if you knew that somebody was crazy as hell and had been in the hospital for being crazy, you still didn't stay away from him that much. You just knew, well, that's crazy. That's crazy Ed over there. But they right. part of your community and they were still protected in your community. So even with his record and had anybody known his record, he was still protected. He's just sick. That's it. He's just sick. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to do nothing to you. He's just sick. None of these girls feared that man. Nope. None of these girls feared that man. Sad. And it's sad that 50 years later, we still don't know who did it. Sad, so sad. Um, I you know you know what what part really messed me up because I I have previously watched a documentary on this. The the first girl she was a twin. Yeah, and so I, I'm looking at her sister talk about it, and I'm like, this her at that age, like she's supposed to look like this huh. because they're identical twins, mm -hmm. and she yeah. didn't get the chance to look like that. Yeah. And she says she still talks to her sister every day. Yep. Oh, I watched that documentary too. Yeah, it's very sad. Um, the um podcast, um, the Freeway Phantom. Um, a lot of the the commentary is coming from the the female cop Romaine Jenkins, um, about her experience with the case. So again, it is ten episodes, and you can find that on. Let me go to Brandy, your BW your tits are distracted. I see his nice little tits. These are saved and sanctified. <laughs> your tits are they got a turn -tone. sanctified. The men they gonna watch our video, they're gonna be like, oh, let me go and watch this video. Little episode. Is that what you said? Well, let me what? That they're saved and sanctified? Saved and sanctified. <laughs> They got a church on. I'll get us some new male viewers, baby, when they see those things. Oh my God. I, I have something to but say. But I stayed, all, I stayed on track. I didn't say nothing. I was like, wait, wait to the well, end. Well, I, I have put this on and I didn't realize how it really looked because this is my, like, I haven't worn this in a long time. And I forgot how it fits, but it was like I was already late coming on and I was like, oh, dang. You see how I tried to get it angled? But you know, I couldn't be slumped like this. Yep, yeah, we're gonna get some new viewers. I can't. And I she can't. got to wear lipstick on. 
So wrap. And okay. wrap with a holy and sanctified cleavage. Yeah, I don't want saved and sanctified cleavage. They do. <laughs> they will. Mm -mm. I don't know. I wish saved and sanctified cleavage uh, help them uh, cl stay closer to heaven. <laughs> but last, we live in a simple world. Yes. And that's why we got to go ahead in the show because of shit like that. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> That right there. Feel it. <laughs> that right there. Close to the head. No, we all can't. We can't all be like Janelle Monet. No. Now those. That's my wife. Are saved and sanctified. Perfect. And I stand they sit up. They sit up and look at you and smile. They like, do. Like Yorkies. Like Just. A like a pair of Yorkies just sitting up and mm, mm, mm. it's just like an old, like old Only Mills picture, girl. <laughs> <laughs> they, it don't never go out of style. No. Oh my gosh. No. They are absolutely perfect. And I would aspire to have those. However, I got past that size. I don't think I was ever that size. You mm. had to, everybody had to, you had to start there. You just can't wake up and back. Okay, so I started with a training bra and then I woke up and they were big. Period. I went from a training bra to big boots, fourth grade. There was never. Well, I remember those. I remember those. I never and, had um, on their boobs. You know what? I, I think I did go from a training bra to, to uh, literally into a C cup. Literally. I was wearing a trainer bra until I got pregnant, so. Whatever. I care. Junior. And I, 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 oh goodness, you couldn't tell me. I wanted breast so bad, so bad, because I didn't have none. And then if my stomach wasn't so big, I would definitely go down size. But since my stomach, you know, you don't want your, your titties Behind your stomach. What? What? You want them in front of your stomach. So, yeah. Until I get rid of this stomach, they gonna have to stay big. Wow this 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 is probably what that lady was talking about. Oh okay. Well, we did we didn't make a turn. This is not the end of it. Was, it was Jackie's fault. It is your fault, Jackie, because you start talking about it. I did good this, and nobody's nobody's gonna tell you. I was gonna let her make it the entire time because I seen him when first she first came on the camera, and I was like, "Oh, we just doing this today." Wait till you see the edit. Do you see why I just why I got her? When you see the edit, I'm not gonna tell you. When you see the edit and you Listen, message us, I then saw you see them when they first appeared. No, but no, no. It's just like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say nothing. I just want to say that the show did not derail because of anything I said. This time. And this was a really good on topic show. Yes, it was. Until the end. Well, the end we made it to the end though. We made it to the end. We normally don't. Close to the end. We normally we don't. Well, I appreciate both of y'all from you, Jackie, refraining from even mentioning them until the last minute. Um, thank you. Because <laughs> they, they've been there the whole time and I just didn't say nothing. Yep. See, I lifted up my phone and it's still there. I just figured you just wanted to come on here and be a Jezebel. I don't know. If <laughs> well, I put the dress her. on and I like I there was nothing I could do. She got her titties out and her lipstick. I'm, I don't know what y'all do. That's why I say so. I mean, you did say you had to, I, didn't, well, I didn't get to put my earrings on up. because of my because of my tardiness I didn't get to put my big earrings on that would have probably took away the attention 
Oh. Because of my tardiness. So you did say that yeah. you were trying to get your roof replaced. So I don't know if you thought this, you know, he was gonna get some live bids. Maybe the earrings would have would the earrings would have I mean I mean if I can put my cash app up. <laughs> We are not. I would take all of this and all. We are not paying for boobs today. I'll take all bids and offerings. Because the girl do got to get her roof fit. Mm. Money sign. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to have to pray about Hopefully that. Hopefully my mama yes. don't see this because she's going to have a scripture for me. Yes, she you know, will. She's going to be on the prayer line. Talk about, you know, you get your boobs out, pretty. You're prostituting. <laughs> She said, though, that it was a holy sanctified. Have you met Brandy's mama? No, I'm saying, I know that's the week. Brandy already gave, gave us a, a synopsis or whatever you call it of her mom. Her mom and, is beyond um, saved and sanctified. Do you hear me? The so young get saved and sanctified. <laughs> Brandy's mama won't answer the phone in an emergency situation because she's on the prayer line. So if you are in an emergency, she's already praying for it. And she ain't going to stop until the call's over. Really? That's what kind of saving say goodbye. Brandy's mom is. Yes. Yeah, she's going to be in trouble. Big trouble. Ha ha. All right. So we're going to go ahead and end the show. But if you want to know more about this subject, um, like I said, there is a new podcast, The Freeway Phantom. It is... um by tenderfoot tv iheart radio and black bar mitzvah um that's who produced the show it is hosted by celeste headley it's about 10 episodes and go ahead and check that out i will be listening to all of them when i have to go to the office um but yeah if you have it and it really does kind of i listened to a little bit of it was able to listen to a little bit of it and it does go into the reasons why this is still an unsolved case so go ahead and check that out it is recent it came out in may so just over the last couple of months so if you want to go ahead and check that out and um again if you have any suggestions for shows let us know facebook uh instagram black coffee crime or you can comment on any of the episodes here be respectful at all times though because i will tell jackie she can respond to you and that's not that, that won't be good. Um also like look at her face already. Look at her face. Yeah. Look at her face. So if Jackie has to respond, you know you're gonna be in trouble. I'm gonna be a little bit, I'm gonna give you a little bit of grace. Jackie don't wanna give you no grace. None. She she'd be coming out like immediately, like <laughs> and I'll be like, I, I'm gonna go comment. All the I'm gonna go comment. Man, she, Jackie will send me the responses before I can send them. And she's like, do you see this shit? I'm like, oh, don't answer. Don't respond. Don't respond. She's like, I'm going to go. No, this is she goes. She goes, oh, I'm going to go address it. Oh, because I'm about to get on there and it's going to say it's gonna say my name right there. But, but let me tell you what we could do on this show. We can do what we want to do on this show. This is our okay. show. We can do what we want to do. Be respectful. Right at underneath Black like Coffee and Crime, my name is right underneath the red. Yo, and. Yes. And. One thing we do is we return energy. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. So, however you come at me or come at one of us, that's how you going That's the response. Don't expect a professional response, a kind response. If that's not the kind of, I got a home church. But I don't care. Do not come at us sideways. I, I, I don't. I will not. I will not handle that. Brandy is the brand is the the definitely. Well, BW is the girl. She's really sweet. Then you got Brand, she's gonna say it in the most classiest way possible. And then you got me. I'm coming straight hood. Ratchet, ghetto. But you either way you don't get it. And I'm not none of those things, but I just tend to respond that way. All right, all right. So be respectful. And we'll be we'll be respectful. That's all we got. But yeah, like and subscribe, share, all of that. And um, these episodes are every other week on Thursdays. But in the meantime, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And good night and enjoy that second cup, y'all. Peace and night.